today I'm going to make a video on how to make donuts or Eskimo donuts as they're called. Um, I wanted to give you an idea of the ingredients you're going to need beforehand. So you're going to need eggs, yeast, some vegetable oil, milk, salt, butter, sugar, some water, and some flour. My favorite flour to use is the gold medal bread flour, but it's kind of hard to find now, so today we'll be using the one that I could find, which is some organic flour. I'm sure it'll be okay, but if you can, try to get that one. All right, let's get to it. So what we're first going to do is we are going to proof the yeast. So you need two cups of warm water. And then you're going to need four packets of yeast, which I don't buy the packets, I buy the big thing from Costco. And that is nine teaspoons. So nine teaspoons of yeast, two cups of water. And then you're going to need some sugar. I put about, Eskimo donuts have a lot of sugar, so um, I normally add about half of the sugar that I'm gonna use for the recipe in with this part. So I put about mm, five tablespoons. So one, two, three, Four. We'll call four good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, my oven has a neat feature which it just warms up the oven a little bit and it helps the yeast to proof. So I'm going to put this in there for about 15 minutes and then I'll start the next process. So while the yeast is in the oven proofing, um, this is where I get the next step ready which is getting the milk, um, salt, butter, and sugar into a bowl and I put it in the microwave just to kind of warm it up. It helps the yeast and everything so it rises and it's not shocked by cold. So um, what you're going to get is one cup of milk. It doesn't matter what kind of milk you use. Um, and then a whole stick of butter, so half a cup of butter. And I like to open it up and just cut it cut it into like the tablespoon so it's a little bit easier and it doesn't take as long for the butter to melt in the microwave and warm up. So I'll give it a good cut. Okay, and then you're gonna do one one teaspoon. one tablespoon of salt. This is like pink Himalayan salt. You can use whatever salt you want. This is just what we have in bulk because Uriah makes um, some salt with it. So I just use what he has. So one tablespoon into there. And this is where you're going to add also a bunch of sugar because that is how Eskimo donuts are made. Sweet. My kids like the sweet. So I add in about another, I want to say, six to seven tablespoons. Altogether, you want to use around 10 to 12 tablespoons of sugar. Um, there's a sweet spot that I've kind of found where about 10 is where I kind of like to be, and 12 is a little bit on the sweeter side. So it just depends on how I guess I'm feeling that day. So we're, we already added four to the yeast, so then we'll add in another six. One, two, three. Four. Okay, so now that is done, we're gonna put it in the microwave for about a minute and about 30 seconds in, we're just gonna give it a good stir, try to get that butter melted and um, stick it back in for 30 seconds, make sure everything, the butter's melted and it's just lukewarm. You don't want it too hot, you just want it like a lukewarm. So here's about 30 seconds into it being in the microwave. You can see that the butter is starting to melt, so just give it a little stir. And if you get it too hot, just let it sit for a minute before you add it to the yeast. So you don't 
yeast gets kind of picky when you're making breads and stuff like that. So if it gets too hot, that is okay. Just let it cool down for a little bit. Okay, so now it's out of the microwave. You can see that all the butter is melted. And you just want to kind of give it a good mix so that the um, sugar and the salt dissolve. And just set that to the side. Let that sit for the, to the side for a little bit. And then we can work on our eggs. So three eggs. We're going to crack them open. Then you want to whip it. Whip it good. Give them a good chicken. All right. Put those to the side, and now you're just waiting on the yeast. So I just stuck the, or took this out of the um, oven. It's getting nice and puffy, so it's about halfway through. So we want to put it back in and make sure it's nice and bubbly and has that lovely yeasty smell. So now we are going to bring everything together. We have our yeast. It's all nice and bubbly. It smells good. Um, we're going to add in our eggs. Now we're three eggs. Then we're going to just kind of double check, make sure it's not too hot, which it is perfect. Mix all those in together. Mix that all around. All right, that is good and mixed. And now we are going to add in our flour. I honestly, I don't know how much flour I use because I just go until I can feel in the dough of when it is good. So I wanna say if you were to guess, maybe like eight to 11 cups of flour, but I don't know. I'll show you what I do and we're just gonna have to roll with it. So let me get a spoon. And we're just going to start pouring some in until we can knead it, as in kneading the dough. Put that in. And if you're wondering why it's quiet in my house, is because I tried to do this while my little ones were sleeping, or they would be bouncing off the walls and you would see Harley sitting on the counter over here wanting to help because her favorite thing to do now is watch cooking videos and watch Nailed It. So she is definitely picking up on all the cooking stuff that Uriah and I do. And she wants to help all the time. So I'm trying to take advantage of them sleeping. I'm doing this video. So hopefully I'll get through at least most of it while they're napping. So you just keep on mixing, adding the flour to it to get it to a dough. I'm sure you could use your KitchenAid mixer, but it just doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> I make other bread in there and it turns out fantastic, but for certain things you just, I don't know. I don't do it without the uh, electronics. I think I hear somebody coming up the stairs. So you just keep mixing until you get to a dough ball. So when you feel like you're, you can't trudge the spoon through the dough anymore, this is when I do it by hand. And I tend to take off my jewelry and my watch because it gets all 
yucky and it's hard to get all the dough out of everything. So then you just add some more and now you're going to be using your hands. You should be feeling like you're getting a good workout when you're doing this because there's a lot of mixing you have to do and it normally takes me about five, ten minutes to really get the dough to where I want it to be and you get a nice upper body workout. So you can start mixing it by hand, adding flour as you go. You kind of want it to feel like a smooth texture to where it doesn't stick to your hands once the flour is kind of absorbed to it. If it's still too sticky, then you need to just keep adding flour until you get it so it's smooth and not so sticky. See how it's still sticky? That's what I'm talking about. You don't want to have that. You want it to have it so it just comes right off your hands and it's nice and sweet. So we will still definitely need more flour. And if you made other breads, you'll know when you're supposed to be done. Like you can tell the consistency, but if you haven't made any type of bread, it'll be a definitely a learning curve. So now you can tell, I washed my hands so you can see, if I grab the dough, there's nothing sticking. So that's what the consistency that you want it to be. And if your arms are burning, then you're getting close to being done. And as soon as you get your dough ball to where you need it to be, like I said, there's nothing sticking on there. It feels like soft, but I'm not getting anything on my hands. And what I do next is I grab a little bit of vegetable oil, pour it in my hand, and we're just gonna pat it on the top because now it's gonna rise for an hour. And again, using my oven on the proof setting, it'll stay nice and warm and you want it to go in there for about an hour. I also get a towel and I cover this and I do set a timer because I've noticed that if I accidentally um, forgot about it and it went over an hour, the donuts just taste a little off. So an hour is what I found for the rising is the sweet spot for it. So set my timer, put it in the oven, and it should probably double in size. So when, of course, I'll show it to you when it gets out, but it should double in size, good hour, and then we start frying. Or start making them, sorry, not frying, we don't fry them yet. All right, so it has been an hour, and you can see how large it is. It now completely rose over the bowl, and that's exactly what you want to see. Um, we're going to punch that down, just kind of deflate it a little bit. And we're gonna have a helper. Excuse me, little girl, what's your name? Holly. Harley. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm Gabe. And Gabe. So they're gonna help me roll the donuts once we get to that point. Yes. Um, what I do before I get started on the donuts is I get the oil going. So the oil that I use is just regular vegetable oil, and the pot that I use is my. Um, this is called cast iron 
pot. I think it's so called. hard. I put about maybe like two inches of oil in there, put it on a medium, like a medium on the stove. So you're going to use quite a bit. I had a and that was not enough. It. It. So I need you guys to chill. Because okay. then everybody's going to hear you guys arguing. Okay. So. He said about two inches worth. There goes our timer. Oh, I Should I open it? Nope. Okay. So there's that one. This is gonna go on the stove and start getting warm. Turn this on to like medium. Okay. Now we are going, and I saved these bottles, the empty ones, because once the donuts are all done, I need to put it somewhere, put the oil in somewhere. My grandma used to save it and reuse it. Um, I don't do that, but you can. I just too much, stop please, too much um, time between the last time I use it and the next time I'm making more. So I just use it so I can throw it away, the oil when it's all done and cool. All right, we're going to get a little bit of flour. And this is normally where I get some of the kids help. And just sprinkle a little bit on there so it doesn't, the dough doesn't stick to anything. And this is where I get my helpers. Today my helpers are Gabriel and Harley. They're gonna help me make donut shapes. So I got my surface. I just get about a palm size full and I hand it to them. And I'll show you the different ways of making do do? the dough. Remember, do you make it, you roll it up in your hands, roll it together. Yeah, into a ball. It. Gabriel's eating that one. Gabriel's yeah, dropped it. And then I punch a hole in the middle. Okay. And I try to make it as uniform as I can. And then it's just gonna sit there and kind of rise even more as you're doing <laughs> the be big. rest of. This big enough? Yep, that's perfect. So there's another one. That's why I and made. See, here's Gabriel's. Make so sure that's you remember. Good. I've seen other people like roll it or like roll it out like Play-Doh, but I don't. I don't do it that way. So have her. Good job, Harley. Thank you. I'm making big ones that because the ones. I, I like to make big ones. Me too. Is good enough? Thank you. This one's set There down. you go. All right. Like I said, this is where it's helpful to have some little helpers, and they just help you roll them out. It's kind of like making snowballs. Yes, I like like snowballs, but without using your hands, you have to like roll it. I'll get another piece for Harley when she's ready. I'm almost ready. I'm just I'm another seeing my... piece for Gabriel. And so this process normally takes a while, so that's why you have the heat going on your oh, oil. Man, this one broke. Here, mommy. All right, hold on. Let's squish it back together. And sometimes, like Harley's a little thin there, so we just want to put that back together. And yeah, mine broke, so I got it back up. Piece. Why did go? Here you go, Mom. Perfect. have them in their donut forms. It doesn't matter how they look because when they fry up they all taste the same. Um, when I do fry them up I try to put ones that are kind of similar in size 
I forgot to talk about raisins. There's some people who like to make it with raisins. I don't have any raisins at the moment, but um, as you're mixing the dough together, um, almost towards the last, I want to say like maybe three minutes of you mixing the dough, put in the raisins. I tend to soak the raisins in hot water so it makes them a little bit bigger, a little bit softer. So like hot water for like maybe a minute, drain them, then put them into the dough. Um, like I said, I don't have any raisins, but you can do that. I forgot to mention about the raisins. So these are going to, I want them to rise for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, about halfway through them rising at about six minutes, I'm actually gonna flip them over. So you just grab them and you flip them over. So um, once you get to that point, because these have already been sitting for a while while we were working on these ones, just go ahead and flip them over and let them rise for a little bit longer. Um, and like I said, your oil should be warming over there. It takes it about a good 20 minutes to get up to temperature. Um, I used to have a thermometer where I could check the temperature. I don't know if I do, but I will double check to see if I have it. And once we get over to the um, stove top, I will show you about what temperature should be at. I was able to find my thermometer. Um, it's helpful when you're first starting off instead of just doing a trial and error like oh that looks warm enough and shove it in there um what you want to have it at is at i don't know i don't know how close i need to be for you to see that but it needs to be at about 375. so and that's exactly where it is at right now so if you want to get a thermometer you can or you can just know by the amount of time so that took about 25 minutes to heat up to where it needed to be on a medium low setting like on a number six on my little scale here as you can see right there um, the next thing you're going to need is your handy dandy tongs and I have these giant bowls with a paper towel bedding and now we're going to go ahead and start frying so we got our donuts here, and we're just gonna put one in and make sure that we are good to go. She's fine. And that's exactly what I should be doing. Go ahead, you can stand up there. It's exactly what it should be doing. Be careful, Harley. And it's just a couple barely a couple minutes on each side. You can see that it's already kind of starting to brown. And then once you see that it has a good bark on it, you flip it over. And that is good to go. So that's how you know your oil is ready. So then you can just add in some more. And I normally do like four to five at a time depending on how many will fit in there. And on average about four is what fits. And so there is your finished product. All nice, nice and brown. Set it in there. And you keep going. Look at the bottom. Yeah. You see the bottoms? Are they ready? Mm -hmm. So we should turn them? Mm -hmm. Okay.
Now you're done. Um, you have your finished product. I had given some to the kids and they said they were delicious. Um, I normally move the pot over to the side of the oven or the stovetop, let it sit for quite a few hours, cool it off, use a funnel, funnel it back into the empty container, like I said. Um, your donuts, just to give you, let's see, are nice and yummy. Perfectly soft, nice and crispy on the outside. Delicious. So, I hope you enjoyed. I hope yours turn out delicious, and we will see you next time.